everybody, it's Woman Blockchain coming to you from Consensus 2022. I'm here at an Uncoded event and I'm here joined by Sheldon. Hi, Sheldon. How's it going? Excellent, excellent. Uh, Sheldon's from the Octopus Network and I'd love him to explain what it's all about to you guys. So go ahead, Sheldon. Sure. So in the, in the most concise way, I can describe that we are a ecosystem that supports substrate chains without running a substrate chain ourselves. So we love Polkadot, we love the Substrate platform especially, but we want to make it feasible for everyone to use. So that means uh, reducing the barriers to entry, uh, you know, providing a helping hand manually, one-on-one -on -one dev support, uh, and sometimes providing infrastructure and not just funds. So we, we do a lot of different things to make sure that the, uh, the smaller Substrate projects can have a chance to operate in production without waiting for a pair chain status or going into this sort of like hybrid testnet model. And, um, and we also are the sole provider in production today of an IBC library for Substrate, and that helps uh, Substrate chains communicate through the bridge that we've already built them for sure, but more importantly, uh, through other ecosystems. So. Wonderful, wonderful. So I just want to know a little bit more about like why you think this is important in this ecosystem. Sure, absolutely. So um, we, we kind of have our foot in Polkadot, Cosmos, Ethereum, and Nier, uh, because we think they're all viable technologies that have their use cases. Mm -hmm. um, Substrate is kind of our, our favorite if we had to pick one, but also Substrate is kind of like a architecture for an island. It works really well as an archipelago. They work together well, but by itself, it's much harder to maintain interoperability, mm -hmm. uh, find liquidity, get new users. You know, I like to make examples out of projects like Saito and MathWallet because they're great concepts, and Saito has existed as a great island by itself. But MathWallet didn't want to exist as an island, and they had to wait and do that before they got their parachains live. It shouldn't have to be that way. So what, what is the vision you really see within this? So in the next few years, we have a, a target to reach uh, the 100 app chain count, compare app chain to parachain. Uh, we have a target to reach that in less than four years. Uh, what I'd really like to see is by about 2028, we'd have 1,000 app chains with us. Uh, very simply put, because we don't have a relay chain infrastructure, we don't have the 100 to 126 kind of chain limit that Polkadot has. So in that way, we can create this sort of lobby where substrate chains uh, will have time to build and grow and hopefully move on to either be a pair chain or be their own thing. Interesting. Yeah, I guess that's the, that's the thing when you're creating a, a layer, like building on a layer zero that can be interoperable. Yes, there, there's a lot of moving parts for sure, but also it saves a lot of people time, effort, capital, if strategized correctly. And, and we did spend a good, uh, I'd say, year and a half on product before we went mainnet. So we, we thought about this a lot. It sounds like it. And so how do people end up communicating with you? Is it Discord? How do you handhold in this decentralized world? So Telegram, we like to think of as more of a consumer lobby. When people come there and ask me for more detailed technical support, I give it to them, but I recommend they come to us on Discord. Discord is kind of the more uh, professional lobby to say, hey, you know, I'm running a validator. Can you help me compile this? Uh, can you help me launch? I'm not sure why I can't do this with my keys, etc. You know, Discord really is where we uh, do more of the important operations. And part of that is because it's easy to integrate with Near. There's a, a couple of projects that are working on this, but Discord is much more easily interoperable than Telegram is, for instance. Thank you for letting me know. And, and also, like in addition to that, I think what's interesting about this project is you mentioned something earlier when we were speaking outside is, um, you know, the kind of relationship that can develop with special interests. So maybe you can advise the audience what you meant about that. Sure. So I, I know that venture capital has a viable place in this economy, but at the same time, uh, setting up a relationship where venture has a significant control over what your design is or what your operations are, it's more than uncomfortable. It can be, you know, it can be the death of a project. So the idea that institutions should drive the blockchain space is kind of backwards. And I've been in blockchain since we were just launching things out of our living room to try stuff. So this is my hope that we'll get back to the place of trying things because there doesn't have to be this ball and chain of, oh, it'll never succeed because we don't have a billion dollars to fund us. Like that sort of mentality is, is pretty thick in the ecosystem right now. And I understand, mm -hmm. but we, we want to try to mitigate that and, and give people resources they can use for free. Absolutely. I mean, there's a lot of things that are driving humans and it's beyond just money. 
And That's when true. people have that support uh, of just getting creative, I think that a lot of ideas can come from that. You know what I mean? We hope so, yes. I agree. So why the name Octopus? I'm very curious. So uh, we like to make lots of jokes about how the um, uh, octopus has a nervous system and brain that extends throughout the whole, throughout the whole body, uh, three hearts. You know, um, there's some more profane things I could joke about the biology, but it's not the real reason. Uh, that's my sort of like fun re response to that. Uh, the real logic is that we are a decentralized project. Uh, we're not a DAO structure yet, but we're working on a series of DAOs that will transfer a lot of power to the ambassadors, to our community, mm -hmm. and eventually to us. Um, by 2024, when our token unlocks are completed, no further OCT tokens will be minted, and by then, we'll need to be ethical participants and not owners of this ecosystem. So that's our, our real target. Mm -hmm. how, how did you come up with a team that shares the same values as yourself? It's not easy. Um, how? That's a very good question. Um, part of it is uh, close human relationships. Uh, people on the project have all been in crypto for a, a period of time, and a lot of us have, have known each other uh, for quite some time. For instance, the operating manager and I have known each other for, I think, five years now or something like that. So we're kind of used to each other, and it's easier to manage risk in that regard. I might have a guess that you know one or two of my colleagues will like or not like a certain thing. That doesn't mean that I get uh, anxious and like you know a preemptive about it, but it means that I have an understanding and a respect that at some point you know, someone might come forward and say, hey, I'm not cool with this. Or I might say, hey, we need to walk this back and, you know, do some free work here. Mm -hmm. So it's delicate is the short answer. Is it, is it managed with three hearts is my question. <laughs> An odd number of hearts? Yeah, for sure. Because it, it is that, like, kind of uh, ambiguous love, if you will, that, like, you know, we're, we're cool with each other. But also we know that sometimes one arm might not know what the other arm is doing and we figure it out. Because that is what the nervous system of an octopus is. If you're not familiar, one arm literally does not know what the other arm is doing, but they are still all attached to the head and moving towards the goal. Mm -hmm. Sounds like blockchain to me. I'm glad. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> uh, you just put another name on it. That's cool. Yeah, so um, I guess to conclude on this, I, I want to know what you want to leave the audience with knowing about uh, what they should, where they can find you, and what are you really excited that's coming for your project? Sure, sure. So... Um, Twitter and Discord are probably the best places to engage. Um, we've got a couple of exciting things coming up. There's always chains launching in our ecosystem or in progress of launching. Um, the thing that I'm really excited about is NFT bridging that's coming either end of this quarter, middle of next quarter. Um, it's a mint and burn solution, but it's a really big thing for our ecosystem to have NFTs moving between chains uh, and near protocol as well. Yeah, and I think something else that you mentioned that was interesting to me earlier on was the, the part where you said you're trying to, on the Polkadot ecosystem, allow for the messaging on-chain. Can you maybe go into that a little bit? Like, what, how do you, how, like, what specifically are you helping with? Because so, you said you build a bridge, so I just kind of want to get a better grasp of what you're saying here. All good. So um, we're working with Aster right now to build their first IBC bridge. It'll be a bridge to and from Polkadot in the Cosmos ecosystem. We don't need to own that. We need to make sure it's built. Axelar has put one in place already with Injective, and I'm sure that'll work just fine. But IBC has a different uh, level of flexibility that we want Aster to be open to. So aside from the bridge building that we do for there, um, the uh, the sort of uh, the modules, the pallets that we're, we're working on to make that happen, we want that to be used in, in more than just Aster. Um, we're hoping that other chains will see that Polkadot's purpose is to sort of share a uh, distributed virtual machine. So the relay chain's value is that you can move transactions and data between two chains, but also that you have a host in between that can actually do stuff. You don't have to sort of share an open space with middleware. Um, that's a, a really mature concept for Polkadot. We want to suggest that it can be done differently, and then that way when you're at a sort of enterprise flagship level. At the top level of operating substrate, that makes sense. At a starter level, that's a really, really expensive service that you have to pay for that you might not use. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. I think that's probably one of the hardest things for me to, uh, like when I was reading about Polkadot, I think that was the, the, the like cross-chain messaging and like how it's kind of like, for me, it seems like it doesn't eight because it goes from one side to the other. And then like it, the way that it gets validated, I was like, okay, um, maybe I need another, another lesson on this. So what you're saying is basically these parachains may not 
or like the other basically the smaller projects may not need an a whole enterprise level um communication schema that it could be done on like a smaller level is that what, is am i getting that correct exactly it's like being a small business and starting with a sap and an erp platform it just doesn't make any sense you're not looking at you know gigs and gigs and tables and tables you just you need a solution that is sized to you and we we feel like we provide that for young substrate projects i see so it's basically okay I think now I, I understand that. Thank you for helping me clarify that. I'm sure. still probably going to watch that video six more times before I feel like it really sinks in, but you know. Thank you so much for your time, and uh, it's been a pleasure to meet you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. So, Sheldon, tell us about this exciting thing you're telling me. So I forgot to mention that we have a really critical ask out there to a bunch of small communities right now. I would call this a semi-public ask. It's not truly a bounty, but if you are willing to work on a system so that your community can share the operation of a validator in Octopus Network, we want to give you the capital that you need to start that validator. It's least proof of stake, so that means you have to have a minimum of 5,000 OCT tokens just to run that validator, right? Mm -hmm. We know that that capital isn't something that a lot of students have lying around. So we want to enable that for students, for builders, for really any community that wants to try, but there's a, a critical prerequisite, and that is that one person cannot ruin it. So if you have a split up key setup, if you're doing multi-sig in some way, or using mm -hmm. sub-accounts on near, there's, there's lots of possibilities here, um, and one person has the ability to bring the solution down, we say you didn't actually make the solution. It's a very tough ask, because someone will have to initiate the task, and then other people who are trusted will have to take custody of that based on the sort of uh, agreement from the community. It's a, and it's, a, it's a really difficult trust exercise. It's not that hard as a private key management exercise, but it's a difficult thing to manage without a lot of structure. If you're an organization and you have requirements for how keys are managed or you set up protocols for how keys are managed, that's one thing. But to just be a group of people that come together sort of naturally or by some other means and say, hey, we want to run infrastructure we want to operate a server for a blockchain it's a lot so it is a, a difficult ask but we we want to make it easy in, in two ways number one uh, i offer my time anytime anytime someone wants to, to have a chat with this or sort of you know battle front the solution no, that's not the right word battle test the solution um then yeah we're, we're very happy to to go through it with them um also the oct tokens themselves we are giving that minimum that's necessary to run the validator, but more importantly, once you get to that point and your validator's running, you can accept delegations. So that means that the base level of return that you should get from just operating validator, yeah, it'll pay your bills, it'll keep the server running, but there is a decent financial reward for, for doing this activity long-term. So as long as that blockchain is operating, you'll get those payouts from that uh, grant that we've given you, and we don't expect that OCT back, we just expect that you want to keep running the validator to keep getting profits for yourself, and that makes us look good. Great. Well, thanks for letting us know. And uh, yeah, if you guys are interested, you know what to do. Thanks for letting me get that updated. Thank you.